And here it goes. Now she has plans to cut me, stab me, kill me. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ngozi. If you are new to the channel, you are welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the little notification bell so you never miss an upload. On this channel, we talk about love, marriage, dating, sisterhood, brotherhood, children, parenting, pregnancy, any real matter in the community that's affecting us as a people, we talk about it on this channel. And today I'm telling you a little story about an incident that I encountered um, related to stabbings, which is quite a problem in our society currently. There are a lot of reports on stabbing in the country as we speak. It's become so rampant. You go into stores and there are signs everywhere saying, you know, stabbing is not cool. Um, you want to purchase a knife, you've got to be 21 or above, you've got to show ID, uh, even if you're buying it just to cook in your house. But it is a real issue and it isn't funny when an individual threatens to use a knife on you. So the mere fact that an individual has been thinking about this and has to verbalize it, it's only a matter of time before they carry out that evil thought. Now, I had an experience like that many years ago when I came to the country. I did mention in a previous video how seriously difficult it was for me as a young teen coming into this country, navigating my way. It was really complicated and I have a lot of stories and a lot of experience to share with people who are willing to, you know, listen, pluck a leaf um, and also share their experiences as well so that when people come across these stories on YouTube or any other platform, they can relate or learn or teach one another how to navigate their way through these complicated issues when moving to a foreign country as the case may be. In a previous video I mentioned some of the difficulties I faced coming to the United Kingdom as a young teen and I happened to sleep in a public kitchen on a public chair uh, for a few nights before I was able to get situated and when I say situated I finally found myself in a hostel, a public hostel and I started hopping from hostel to hostel as the case, you know, uh, would permit uh, because of one issue or the other. And in a particular hostel where I lived, um, this was meant to be a building built for a football club of some sort. So each floor had a public shower, right? So tons of showers, tons of bathrooms, tons of toilets behind doors, obviously, um, but the showers were sort of in a public setting. And so it would be that footballers would come to that building or they lived in that building. I can't quite say what the arrangement was for this building, but it was all men. So they would, you know, lodge in these rooms. And, you know, if you needed to use a bathroom, you just headed down the hall on that floor to the bathrooms. It was public. Now, downstairs, however, there were more master type rooms. And these master type rooms would share one bathroom. So two, three rooms would share a master bathroom. That bathroom had a shower, um, a tub behind a closed door in the bathroom, and then a toilet as well behind a closed door. So I happened to obtain one of those rooms to live in. And I thought it was really pretty. The building was really lovely as well. Lived in there and the landlord was really kind. You pay your rent and you go your way it was really beautiful so it felt like I was living in a hotel somehow and I thought yes this is where it's going to be but on one occasion I went into the bathroom to take a, a bath what I would do because it's still public is go into the bath uh, room where the bathtub is and close the door so someone can still come in and use the showers use the toilet in a different you know section uh, but i would have privacy because i'm a girl right um, so i came out from the bath one day I put my towel around myself came out and the manager of the building was in there the one who obviously is the landlord and you know gave me this place to live where i was paying rent and he had a towel on and he started engaging me and started, you know, trying to wrestle me, to rape me. I mean, listen, they don't usually announce I'm here to rape you. Just this activity started and he started fumbling around and started, you know, shaking me off. And I had this towel on. So I screamed and I fought back. And when I did, the thing is, I know that in some situations it's complicated. But in this situation, he gave up because the scuffle was going to be heard. And so I wouldn't say that it, it was my fighting him off that got me out of there. 
so to say. Does that make sense? So it wasn't because I was strong enough to throw him off me. It was just that he gave up because I did put on a fight. Does that make sense? <laughs> anyway, so out the door I went and then into my room and I realized there's a problem. I'm going to get evicted. I'm going to get kicked out and this is not going to be the last time this is going to happen. And somewhere along the line, this would have happened to many other girls and they would have caved because they would want to live in a, in a peaceful environment and not want to have any issues. But if they've got nowhere else to go, I mean, you're living in a hostel, then you're likely to succumb to his evil plan. So I already knew this was the beginning of the end and so I immediately wrote to the council and I said there's a problem, I'm living in a situation where there are public bathrooms and I can't take a bath and I've had an incident. So I want to go into detail but there's been an incident. So immediately the council sent out someone to come and have a look at the building. They did have a look and the woman said to me, you shouldn't be living here, this is, this is definitely a problem. So you have been sort of escalated to the top priority list to rehouse. So that was great news, yes? So I got rehoused and um, with this sort of rehousing that is an emergency, you end up having to take exactly what you are given. You don't get to make a choice and say, I don't like it. You're not given three properties and they say choose. They give you the one, you've got to go. So I'm given this house and I move into this house. It's an old English house and it's got, uh, you know, apartments carved out of it. Otherwise it would have been a nice big old house for an English family, yes? But I. I have this apartment up the stairs, up top, opposite of someone else, and then we have the caretaker, we have another apartment, and then there's another apartment downstairs. So when you come through the front door, you go past that front door for that apartment, work your way up the stairs, and I am on top of the apartment that you go past when you come through the front door. Now, when I got to move into this property, I saw that the floorboards were all rickety, damaged, um, no paint, nothing, just a real dump a real old house so with floorboards that are rickety no flooring whatsoever as soon as you step on it it squeaks and creaks and blah, and it's noisy and echoey right it's empty and it's cold but it's a place to stay no one was living downstairs below me so I would move around freely you know patter 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 there pitter patter pitter patter over there to the bathroom to my kitchen to my living space no flooring you can imagine someone coming from a hostel I didn't have money to perform some full-on renovation I didn't have that let alone flooring which is really expensive you have to understand that it would mean that the floorboards all have to be lifted up and new floorboards placed before you can put flooring whether it's final wood or carpeting or anything of the sort so I'm not going to be able to do that that's something that the council or the association was supposed to have handled but I was thrown in there like that anyway no work done so I threw my things on the floor went to sleep and you know started to build my life from there occasionally I would paint a wall and then wait for the next paycheck paint another wall wait for the next paycheck buy a rug things like that next thing I know I get a new neighbor her and her husband move into the apartment downstairs over the next couple of days I started to smell a sort of Indian hemp marijuana uh, just smells all these strong smells start filtering through and when it does there are fights and, and they start beating up on each other and I thought oh, great finally right the peace and calm that I thought I had it's gone uh, I thought that was bad but no it was only the beginning next thing I know I walk across my room to another part of the house and I get a big thump 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 she would pop her ceiling and that would you know create a bang 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 on my floor and she would yell and she would cuss ya bamba this ya bamba that she called me the b words the c words all the words f words my gun bust your fierce we gonna bust your fierce she went on and on and on and you know i'm thinking Ugh, what do i do i can't do anything about my situation and um I'm already redrawn from this woman in a way I can't say, uh, explain what's going on. And maybe that would have helped, but I, I doubt it. There was heavy drug use downstairs, heavy drug use, okay? And that just puts me off. I keep to myself, I, I, don't, want, I don't want any trouble. You understand, I just don't want any of that. And um, 
next thing this went on for for days i i used to enjoy listening to music i would come home and if you remember any of some videos i uploaded some time back i would speak about the fact that i would cry and cry in my apartment i was alone it was cold it was horrible it, you know i was still taking my time to put it together so i would go through episodes of depression crying and listening to music at the same time and, and praying and crying and praying and praying and crying and you know just asking god to to help me hold on it was so bad so lonely so isolating and so unfriendly you know um so during some of these episodes she would thump the ceiling shut up shut up you know and i'm thinking oh my god i I suddenly don't have a place anymore, but I have a place. And so I started sort of staying over at friends' houses and I would visit and instead of leaving sooner um, so I could catch the last bus or something, I would still hang on. And then when it would get so late, they'd say, why not stay over? You don't have to go, why not stay over? But I already knew from the beginning that I, that was the plan. Started avoiding my home, you know, the place I put my head down to rest and unwind. And then on one occasion, it so happened that she came upstairs to my apartment and bang, 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 bang on the door. I open the door and I say, what is it? And she starts saying to me, now listen, just the other day, me gone downstairs and me see say my tires are done being slashed. So she's saying to me that the tires were cut and somebody told me that the person who cut those tires had fit the description of you, you know. And so me just wanna find out why you cut my tires, why you pop my tires, yeah, yeah. And I thought, someone described me. She says, yes, someone described it, said it's you, someone described you exactly to a T. <laughs> I'm thinking, stop it will you so now i'm really agitated like i can't with this lady i tiptoe around my house you scream at me all the time even though i've not actually seen your face you know properly i avoid you like the plague uh we've never had two words together but through your ceiling and my floor and now you're at my front door accusing me of cutting your tires and you want to know why i cut your tires this is how you get cornered you guys and i'm thinking this is bad i'm not about to say yes i did and i'm gonna fix them because i didn't do anything so i said to her i didn't touch your tires if someone has described me you've actually got someone who's a witness i think you better call the police so that they can further you know report what's happened and then if it's me we're gonna find out won't we ah oh, she lost it as soon as i called the police as soon as i mentioned the word police she said Ah, you want to call a Babylon? Ah, we supposed to be sisters and that? You want to call Babylon? She lost it. While she started screaming, it was like spit was coming from her mouth. And yeah, it was just, you know, one of those impossible situations. You can't have a conversation. It's not sane. One, she's lying. Two, she's incredibly high. While she was talking to me, she was like staggering. And I'm thinking, geez this girl could hurt me and this is no joke this is how it happens and so i try to close my door and she bangs the door backwards at me onto my face and i'm trying you guys i'm trying to hold myself i'm like why am i in this situation she finishes screaming i'm in that mode of just freeze a lot of things are going through my head i want people to understand just because you you, you know you have individuals who don't retaliate you have individuals who don't respond really quickly. And one of the reasons I didn't respond very quickly, it's a default aspect of who I am. I grew up in a very violent, I wouldn't say very violent, but I grew up in a country where to lunge forward and pop you in the face isn't, isn't, a, isn't an issue, right? Um, so, and I already have the knowledge that in this country, if you get into a physical altercation, someone's getting locked up and it's all gonna go left and I'm not going to prison for anybody, okay? Now, I have more of a mental force controlling my hands than I would say the next person. So, I've never lunged at anybody in my life. However, I have crazy thoughts. I'm looking at this lady. She's really slim, she's really slender, she's banged my door and all I can see is me really you know lunging at her really fast I've seen the stairs and I'm thinking off you go down the stairs and what if she dies hmm? then what so this is why retaliation or where you meet someone who doesn't retaliate 
or just freezes uh, when confronted physically like that. Don't be confused, not for every single one of us. It's not because we are cowards or something like that. It's just stuff's going on. The, the brain is recalibrating <laughs> and I'm having to make really quick decisions not to kill somebody, basically. You understand? Um, so in this situation, I stood there, she was yelling, she's banged the door in my face and my brain is calibrating. Do I throw her down the stairs on top speed? And then if she dies at the bottom of the stairs, I'm finished. I'm finished. So I stand there and she's like, you're not saying nothing. And the next thing you know, she says to me, don't worry, one of these days I'm gonna cut you up. We're gonna take a knife, we're gonna cut you up, we're gonna cut you to pieces. You took a knife, you cut my tires, we're gonna cut you to pieces. And here she is threatening that she's going to cut me up one of these days. She's going to stab me, she's going to stab me, I'm gonna get stabbed, I'm gonna get stabbed. One of these days she's gonna take care of it, she's gonna fix me. I cut her tires and I'm the one who's gonna get cut. Now I'm in a situation. I've been threatened, I've been told I'm gonna to get cut up. Now no matter what I do with this lady, she constantly, uh, I have become an enemy of hers through no effort of mine. And here it goes. Now she has plans to cut me, stab me, kill me. I'm alone in this country. And people are getting stabbed and people are getting, you know, ripped. Only recently during that period, a young boy, Dami Lola Taylor, was, you know, stabbed and, you know, by students with a, with a bottle and he slumped in a stairway and bled to death. And I'm thinking about that and I'm thinking, now I'm, I'm in, you know, this is it. So I close my door, I go in and of course I carry on with my crying and my calling on God and I got, I, I, just the misery, like, I don't know what to do. And so with the days that followed, I'd go off to my friend's house. I'd stay one day, two days, three days, four days, five days away, just hopping around uh, and not really coming home often. And if I did come home, then I'd come back with a friend who'd stay the night with me, uh, a really good friend of mine then. She was really kind. Uh, and then I'd leave and not come back for days. And I was paying rent and this was my only home, my only haven. And when I would come home on my own, my heart would start beating if I didn't come back with someone. Because I know that I'm gonna open the door, I'm gonna walk past her door, and she could swing the door open and stab me. And now I'm getting tormented. As a young person, studying in university, having to work, no one to talk to her about the situation. Why didn't I tell the police? Really? The police will come, the police will go, and if they were gonna do something, they're just gonna do it. And when you get stabbed, you die, and someone goes to prison for, I don't know, three and a half years and comes out. I want to live. I don't want to even aggravate the situation. I don't. And even then, as a young person, I didn't really know how to deal with it. I just didn't know how to deal with it. And being told someone has identified me as the one who ripped her tires. So it so happened on a fateful day, and this is what we call karma. I'm in my house, I'm cooking, I'm doing what I do and it's night time and everything is winding down and the buzzer goes for someone else's property and that's the lady downstairs and they're smoking and they're high and they answer the front door you can hear it you can hear in the house when someone's opened the front door and all I hear is bang 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 and it's not loud enough to be a gunshot but it's also loud and bang 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 and you're thinking, what is that? That's how someone gets stabbed. Pa, 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 pa. So it's like you have to punch real hard and at the same time you've got a sharp end. And what happens is there's a sound of a, a pop, like a balloon, because we are encased human beings. You've got your mouth, your ears, your eyes, yes, but you only take air in through your nostrils and, and back out all through your mouth. And um, when someone is stabbed, there is a pop a very loud like a bang like you you popped something that has gases and air in it and i hear bang 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 and when something happens when someone's life has been you know violated you just know if you are a passerby if you're nearby if you're a neighbor you're in the vicinity you feel it you know someone's temple's been violated you just know someone's hurt so everyone in the house, we heard this big bang, bang, bang at the door and a scuffle. And 
I make sure my door was shut and I hear thump, 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 thump up the stairs and I hear this woman who threatened to stab me crying, banging on my door to let her in. Please let me in, please let me in, please let me in. And I hold my door because I don't know what's going on. All I know is there has been an attack and it sounded like a gunshot. And I hold the door and before long, the ambulance, the police, the entire street was swarming. I open up my door and it's this woman's blood on my door. My front carpet, down the stairs, drip, 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 blood everywhere, her blood. In the very position where she threatened to cut me up, she gonna cut me up, she gonna bust me fierce. And all of that and the third. What goes around does come around. And let me tell you something. The following morning, the caretaker had come round. He lives in the house. He spoke to us. He calmed us down. He was like, thank God they're going as they are. That following morning, because this happened at the night and in the morning, I see moving trucks. I see the husband. I see them just moving things away. And they didn't sleep in that house that night. They took off. There was an altercation with someone, a drug deal gone wrong, something owed money, didn't know money, rumors, I don't know, can't repeat it, haven't got a clue. Uh, key thing is they were attacked by this individual being stabbed um, and they had to flee the area altogether. And in one night, I got my house back. I was able to go out come home as I please. No one lived in that property till I left, till I moved out. And, um, you know, it was, it was quite a surprise to me at first, but later on it, it, it made sense that the very person who had, you know, threatened to stab me got stabbed. You know, I went back to my place of calling out. I went back to my place of crying. I went back to my place of praying, you know, and let me tell you, you don't always get to have a front seat to see an individual fall into the hole that they dug for you. In this case, I had a front seat, it, it came to pass. But for some of us, we don't always get to see that. But don't be fooled. Anyone who digs a hole for you and continues to tend and mine that hole and plan around it, they're going to fall into it, whether you see it or not. So don't forget, hold on to your integrity, hold on to it, you know? Whatever rules it is that you live by to guard your life, don't be pushed over to the dark end to, you know, um, yeah, of course you've got to stand up for yourself in certain situations and so on, but there are some situations where you are cornered and it's more a case of, you know, tilting you or tipping you into a person that you are not. Uh, in my situation, it, it isn't as though I could up and just move into another property. I couldn't do that. Uh, it was a, a closed situation. I needed supernatural help and I got that. Okay, I got that. It came to pass. She threatened to stab me in the same spot she stood. Her blood was everywhere. Mm -hmm. So listen, stay strong and always remember, always remember, just because you don't have front seats, right to see an individual fall into a hole that they dug for you doesn't mean they're not falling into holes you know you move away you you go far places away from where you were once before and people still go on to live their lives and reap you know the uh, uh fruits of their actions they do they always do i can assure you anyway <laughs> Uh, let me know if you've had any neighbors from hell. I mean, this wouldn't be the first that I've had, but this one certainly was one that stuck with me and created a lot of fear. And I was quite um, thankful how it was resolved. I got to live peacefully in that house until I moved. Um, and um, yeah, let me know what your situation was. How bad uh, did you, how did you deal with it? In my case, it could have gotten worse, but let us know in the comments down below and take care of yourself. And if you are living by a neighbor from hell as we speak, then listen, I'm wishing you all the best. And I pray that you get all the wisdom that you need to manage the situation. Take care. I'll see you again soon in the next video. Until then, have a good morning, a good afternoon, a good evening, a good night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you soon. Bye.